What's up guys, Bryce Michael RC here and I wanted to get at least something done for this Thursday for the cosplay 3D printed stuff and you guys may have been seeing me kicking out some process videos of the Thor Stormbreaker. Yes, I got the Storm Thorbreaker done and I did it in the series part 1, 2, and 3 uh, while I was going along to it because I really wanted you guys to see it broken down you know, in sections and wh one thing that I've noticed is when I'm making these Thursday cosplay things is I'm waiting sometimes two three weeks at a time and there's there's a lot of time in between to lose video uh, there's a few of the process videos where I'm like ah whoops I lost some video here so this is all I really did for this part or something like that or it skips ahead and so I tried something a little bit different you guys can leave in the comments tell me if you liked it that way or if you guys just liked it as a, uh, a show video like this and then a process video along with it uh, I don't know, I'm just trying, I'm always trying things new just in case anybody else wants to print these things and wants to make them. I like to give you guys good ideas uh, just in case, you know, put a process video along to it. Just so nobody has any questions saying, how did you do this, how did you do that? It's completely transparent so you guys can get on and, and just go, oh, that's how we did it and stuff. So, the Anticubic i3 Mega's uh, power supply still hasn't came in. It was supposed to come in the 22nd. Uh, I don't know. I don't know where it's at and it's one of those things that it comes over here from China and it has a completely different tracking number and once it gets here and processed through the Chicago International uh, postage thing, the L and then the number doesn't, doesn't really track anymore and so there's really no way to tell when it's going to be in here. They kind of just guess and tell you when it's going to be here but Chicago can kind of hold it up and, and every time I've had anything go through the Chicago it's, it's took like a week or two weeks or something like that and it's, it just takes forever for it to come in. So. When it said the 22nd, I was actually surprised. I was hoping it would come in so soon, but I really didn't believe that it was going to come in that quick. And it hasn't, so I'm still waiting on that. And so I've got two prints, like I said before. We missed last week because I didn't get them done in time because I thought, I thought, you know, we were going to... It was a whole mess. Don't even worry about all that. But I want to get something done for this week and get something done for next week. I thought I was going to get Darth Vader done for this week for you guys, but I had... There's something about the humidity in Kansas. I don't know if it's the humidity here. It's just not allowing the the spray paint to dry correctly or what's going on. But I let I wait. You know, it, the spray paint says 24 hours or something like that. And then when you wait 24 hours, you can put another coat on and stuff, and it usually works really well. Some people even cheat and put another layer on earlier than that. But for some reason here, I can wait two to three days and put another coat on, and then it just spiders up the front because it's not dry underneath the spray paint. And so I think it might be the humidity because in the summertime the humidity in this area is just brutal. We do not have dry air. It's completely just you pour down sweat in like 80 degree weather. So it's it it might have something to do with that. I've been putting my prints outside to and they've been drying better outside than they do dry inside. So there might be a difference in the the fluctuation of the temperatures or something like that. But I'm going to do a little bit of research into that. And and I might have to do something different when it comes to printing and then telling you guys when it's going to be done because because I, I, I've been actually waiting longer than it says to wait and it's still not waiting long enough and so every time that I spray a clear coat on or I spray a second layer on I'm sitting here going I hope this don't and it does and then I and then it just irritates me because then I have to go back in and sand and do this whole process again and so the Darth Vader was almost perfect the clear coat match the the satin and and it it just it had that shine like in the second movie where you can see everything off of his helmet you could you could literally hold the helmet beside you and it was like a mirror you could see yourself in it it was such a deep black with such a such a just an amazing shine to it everything was perfect except right on the front right here it just spider webbed and it oh my it was just it was heartbreaking but anyways today we have the stormbreaker the finished stormbreaker it's not 100% finished, but for the most part it is. And when I say that is, I'm trying to figure out a way to hide the battery better right here. When I say it's not completed all the way, it's only because I still have the battery visible in the back. I think what I'm going to do is if I ever take it out anywhere, uh, I'm going to paint the battery. I'm just going to take a couple batteries out and I'm going to spray paint them uh, brown just to kind of match up or, or black or something like that. Uh, I thought about doing something with a piece of cloth to go over because I have that brown leather and I thought that that might match up with the handle pretty good and, and so I, I don't know. I'm still kind of on the thinking portion of that but I want the 9 volt battery. I had some suggestions in, in the comments field of people saying to use a watch battery because it's smaller, it'll hide it better. I'm just not sure how long that'll last 
And I've got six LEDs in here, so I don't, I'm not sure how much uh, power a watch battery will, will be. I'm going to have to do some experimenting and stuff with it. So for since I already did the test video, the very part one was a test video to see if it worked. And it worked with a 9 volt really good, lights it up really bright. I wanted to go ahead and go with it instead of uh, doing some more testing and things like that. Uh, go with what's proven, go with what works for now. And then when I make the bigger one, which I am going to make a bigger one, I've already decided once the power supply does come in, I'm going to make a bigger one of these. That way I can split this down in the half right here. That way these are in two different halves and I can put all the wiring and stuff on the inside. Plus this will be split down the middle and the handle will be split down the middle. And I'm going to put some PVC in here and use, use like a heat gun to, to form the, the PVC uh, to the handle. So I want to do this exact print. I've already got the G-codes made for it to where it's, uh, I think this is 100% and the G-codes are set at like 350 or 400%. So not a whole lot bigger, but definitely way bigger than this. Uh, and it's all, instead of this was one, two, three, four, and five pieces, that one is, uh, I think it's about 32 pieces altogether in order to fit on the Anycubic i3 Mega. And so there's a lot of, and it's all hollowed out, so I can put the LEDs anywhere that I want them and then put the pieces together. There will be no wires. You can see, if you look real close, that there are, you can see the wires and stuff. I painted them black and brown and, and all sorts of colors. That way they could hide them. I put putty over the ones in the front, which you guys can see in the process video, uh, where the wires go, just to kind of mask that a little bit. I got this little button right here. Uh, it's from a Harry Potter wand. My, my son had a a wand, a Harry Potter wand, and it had a little button in the back. And he broke it, and so I took the little button off of it because I couldn't find a button in my area that was this small. I looked on Amazon and I couldn't tell how small they were. I just put small button, <laughs> small on and off switch. And I, I couldn't tell. I didn't want to order something that wasn't going to be small enough. And then I took that thing apart and seen this, and this thing is super small. And it was brown already, so it works perfectly. And it's one of those that you you push, turns it off, push, and it holds. But you can also just push it halfway and then let it go. So you can kind of do your own thing instead of leaving it on. So I really like that button. And it was super simple to wire up. You guys can see in the process video, it was really, really easy to wire up. The only thing that was hard about it was it was so small, I kept burning the actual button itself with the soldering gun. Uh, but you, you, can't, you can't see the bottom where I soldered it. Drilled a hole in there, put that in with the with the putty and everything, and it went in really smooth and good. I'm left-handed, so it's it's crooked. Had to go in at an angle, but I'm left-handed and my finger goes right here anyway. So, uh, I think that's cool. I mentioned this in the very first video that I made of the Stormbreaker that this is something that I wanted to do. That it was just an idea that I had, and I actually followed through. It came to fruition, and I think that this is way better. I'm so glad that I did this instead of just keeping it clear. Which the clear one was was good. It was. I loved it. I loved the model itself so much that just having the clear model was really good. But we had to step it up. I was like, I've got to turn this into something so it matches the rest of my shelving because everything else is done, you know, except for a few uh, prints and stuff here and there. So took I, I took time and really this only took a couple days. Each one of those process videos uh, was a day and a half, and so the the second video was done on the first, the, or the, in the second video, half of it was done on one day and half of it was done on the other, so it was just two full days. Uh, so it wasn't a, wasn't a day and a half, so it was a, a video and a half per day, <laughs> I guess is what it was. So, didn't really take that long, it was all basically, the longest part was the, the paint drying and stuff, and I'm still gonna put a clear coat on this and really make this shine. Uh, I kinda like the dull, of, dullness of the, the, uh, X head, and I, I don't want to mess that up any, so I'm probably gonna cover that up and then and then make this just a little bit shinier down here on the handle. Uh, this is something about clear coat. When you add clear coat to something, it makes it look so much better and professional and stuff. But I want to wait and decide what I'm gonna do with this before I decide to put uh, clear coat on it uh, because I don't want just a regular brown and then this to be clear coat. It, it would look so off even if it was around the same color. So I'm kind of just waiting on that. For now, this is it. This is this is how it's going to be for a while. Uh, this has to be one of my favorite props. Immediately, just 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 because I thought of this the first day that I printed it off when I had the model and I was showing you guys, I was like, this would be awesome. To where the blue LED lights 
would represent the lightning that was from the movie and stuff and just that idea that I, I said that on camera that was the first time I thought about it and said it on camera and uploaded the video and stuff and then when I got done I was like oh man I don't know how I'm gonna do that I ended up finding the LED lights which the the description will, the link will be in the description for the LED lights uh, I already had some of these connectors for the battery and stuff and and um, I just kind of went to town on it, tried, you know, came up with some ideas. The first one was just to see if it would work, just to, you know, put the holes in and put the LEDs in and stuff. And then um, after I figured out that it would work and it looked really cool, it was all just a bunch of wires everywhere. And seeing that it looked really cool on the side that looked nice, I was like, I've got to do this. I got to finish it, and and we did. So I think that's amazing. So you can just sit there and we'll do what I did in the first video because I was like, yeah. So you just ah, you know. What I mean? Lighting! <laughs> so, there is a toy out there that does light up just like this to represent the lightning and stuff, but it is not this cool and it is not this bright. And the one thing that this gave me an idea for, look at this really close, this gave me the greatest idea for making the uh, Tesseract. You know, the cube? with the, uh, cause look how, look at that. Is that not perfect? So really all you would need is to print a cube in this filament with these lines and stuff and put, there's two LEDs right here so just basically fill the inside of the, the cube with these LEDs and then in the bottom part you know find a place to put your battery and all that stuff and that would be a perfect tesseract. So that gave me the idea for that. So I think uh, when the power supply comes in and we get the anti-cubic i3 meg up and running, I think a Tesseract is a must to build uh, to go along with my Thor stuff because we have Mjolnir right here. Mjolnir doesn't look as cool anymore when you've got Stormbreaker to put next to it. The LED Stormbreaker. And now when you turn it on, see how this one looks just as gray? with that black weathering and stuff on there I, I think it looks really good I was gonna leave that off but then once I started it I was just like man this looks really good it actually makes it look like a blade like a real blade it's not just a clear filament and it added some depth to it and character and everything just like the the uh, weathering and stuff just adds depth and character to this you know added a ton but I think I'm going to go through and find some other Thor things to kind of do. Uh, once I make the bigger version of this, I, I really want to have uh, some of the suit stuff and maybe even that helmet and everything. I I'm not sure. I'm going to go through and kind of figure some things out. This just has to be one of my favorite props. It's one of my favorite models, one of my favorite designs. And and had I not put this together before putting the electronics in it and stuff, it, it would have been a hundred times better. So if you're going to go on Thingiverse and get this model and print this off, I would suggest you put it at 300%. I would suggest that you split it up to where you can put all the wiring and stuff on the inside. And then do all the painting just like this. You know, uh, you can use your own battery system and button system however you want to. Uh, but I would do the, the painting and everything, put it all together with the wires on the inside, and you would have a legitimate, amazing Stormbreaker to go to Comic-Cons and things with. Uh, because that is literally my only problem with this, is how small it is and that the wiring and stuff is on the outside. That's my only problem with this. And that's only because I put this together before I came up with the idea of putting the LEDs in it. So, perfect model. The guy on this that did this model, kudos to you. You did an amazing job. Thank you for this. It was awesome. I'll leave a link to uh, this model in the description as well. You guys have a good one. Uh, I'm going to do Darth Vader next week. Hopefully we'll have it done by next week. And then hopefully the, the power supply comes in very soon and we get that back up and running and we can continue doing these. We may have Stormbreaker this week, Vader next week, and then have to wait one more week until the power supply comes in. I'm not 100% I'm not sure. But uh, I wanted to get you guys a finished model that you guys could see and get some ideas and stuff from. And, and hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hit that notification button. Hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate all the views, the comments, anybody that wants to get on and, and lend a comment, lend a helping hand that wants to say, you know, why don't you try this or that. I appreciate every one of those comments. And so thank you guys for that. I'm Bryce and Michael RC. We'll see you guys later. Have a good one.